the U.S. federal government is shut down right now. Meanwhile, NOAA continues its weather monitoring operations. Kind of comforting to know that in these crazy times, meteorology remains a top priority, regardless of politics in Washington. We are now in October. The full moon technically is on Monday, but we'll have some bright moonlight each night this weekend after sunset. Back in the old days, farmers had a lot of extra light during the week of the full moon around this time of year to work their fields, and that was incredibly important back then. Otherwise, you were in pitch blackness. That full moon became known as the harvest moon. So enjoy it, and hopefully you'll have some cool weather to go along with that. There's a look at the weather around the country at 6 p.m. Eastern this evening, and we see some very hot weather across the Great Plains, 90s from Texas into the Dakotas, 91 up there north of Pierre, 91 north of Sioux Falls, and pretty warm all through the Rockies. We go further west, we hit this frontal boundary, and things turn cold, and we've got 50s and even a few 40s in the Great Basin area, 41 there at Austin, Nevada. The San Joaquin Valley, also rather cool, mid-70s there, and you contrast that with 98 at Phoenix. And on the East Coast, not much to talk about there, under high pressure. So light and variable winds from Washington, D.C. up to New York City, and then a pretty stout easterly flow through Florida, temperatures rather mild. And we go up to 500 millibars and look at the prevailing patterns. We've got some very broad upper-level flow across Canada. The polar front jet running something like this. So from the Bering Sea across western Canada into Ontario and Quebec. And then that breaks off into a southern stream just briefly right there in California. There's an upper-level low across Nevada and 70 to 80 knot flow along the California coast. Ridging persists across the central U.S. That's kind of blended into this other ridge on the east coast. This all forms one big long wave pattern across the central and eastern part of the country. And some pretty good ridging out there in the Pacific. Let's take a quick look at the weather over the weekend. This trough continues progressing into the Rockies for tomorrow and gradually lifts northeastward into the northern plains. Looks like another trough segment trying to form right here around Sunday. That closes off, and we're looking at another upper-level low for Tuesday across California and Nevada, and that holds there for about 12 hours or so. It then gradually lifts to the northeast, and then we have this off the west coast, so it is quite stormy in that part of the country. A very persistent ridging pattern across the central and eastern U.S., keeping things rather stagnant. And then by the end of next week, this little low broken off, almost a Rex block, although we don't have a closed ridge up to the north. And uh, yeah, this Hudson Bay vortex is really starting to get established here, picking up that flow up to 70 to 80 knots. So that could bring some cooler air into parts of the Great Lakes and the northeast. And we check out that weather in the northeastern U.S. They are underneath that high-pressure area. It is getting to be that time of the year where the channel changes over on this loop. We start out with visible imagery, and we get towards the end of the uh, satellite loop right there. You can see it being replaced by that infrared imagery. So that's infrared, and that's visible imagery. That's just a consequence of the days getting shorter. So we're going to see more of this as we go into the winter. So really not much going on. High pressure temperatures this afternoon ranged from the 70s east of the Appalachians to the 80s in the Midwest. We were looking for 88 at Chicago and 90 at St. Louis. So summer still hanging on out west in that part of the country. A similar perusal of the southeastern U.S. shows more fair skies, however, a bit more unstable as you drop down towards Florida. They've got that cool 
northeasterly flow moving onshore, and we're getting a few showers mixed in there. Temperatures rather mild, even 80s in Florida, 80s across much of the southeastern U.S., and 70s in the Carolinas. Looking at the weather in the southern plains, not much going on. Texas in the grip of a summer that will not go away. We saw 90s from the Texas Gulf Coast to Dallas and Lubbock, then 80s up in Oklahoma. Uh, anything interesting to look at? Well, the uh, sea breeze pops up very briefly right in here. See that right there surging westward, but just not doing very much. Typically in June and July, that can be a prolific producer of showers and storms. But today is not, not the day. In the northern plains, we've got some hot weather in that part of the country. 90s on the Colorado-Kansas border, 90s across South Dakota, and 80s further to the north. For tomorrow, we have red flag warnings in western Nebraska, the Rapid City area, and parts of northeastern Wyoming due to gusty southwest winds up to 45 miles an hour. Again, that's for tomorrow. And as you go further west behind that cold front, we pick up winter weather advisories. Uh, I'll cover that in the Pacific Northwest segment. Let's check out the weather in the Southwest. And heading into the old Southwest, we find deep southwesterly flow with transverse banding across the Rockies. And as we go further to the West, we get into that bear clinic weather setup. The surface front, which is fairly dry on the Southern periphery and some of the anafront type precipitation further to the west across Tonopah, Austin, and Elko. Some cold advection cumuliform clouds through the San Joaquin Valley temperatures there in the mid-70s, a bit warming up rapidly as you get into the lower deserts of Arizona. There's a closer look at things, and yeah, it is quite active in parts of the Great Basin area. Here's that line of convection we start out during the morning hours, that looks like a pretty good line of thunderstorms around Tonopah. Very unusual. And of course, I'll point that out because I used to work at the uh, Tonopah test range many years back. And yeah, that's a good anvil lifting northward a few storms back building along that front all the way down to Goldfield, Beatty, and maybe down to Bishop. So anyway, that is ongoing quite stormy there on the northern part of the Nellis Range and elsewhere. Well, we do have wind advisories all through the Mojave Desert today. They're looking for west winds up to 45 miles an hour around Barstow, Baker. Also wind advisories today in southwestern Utah, west of Cedar City and Delta, and also across much of northern Arizona. They've got wind advisories, Flagstaff, Winslow, the Grand Canyon, south winds to 45 miles an hour. And let's head up to the Pacific Northwest. Well, we saw mild conditions across the Pacific Northwest. A little vortex off the coast right there. Some cooler weather in the higher elevations of the northern Rockies. We do have a winter weather advisory for western Montana, above 5,500 feet around Butte. Two to four inches of snow expected going into Saturday night and Sunday morning. That becomes a winter storm warning around Glacier National Park. Four to eight inches of snow expected over the weekend. Some of the passes getting 10 inches, especially above 7,000 feet. A freeze watch is in effect tonight in southern Oregon around Lakeview and Klamath Falls. Down into Alturas, California, temperatures will fall to 26 to 32 degrees. The high deserts of the Great Basin expecting multiple days into the 20s and 30s going into next week. So the cold advection definitely making its presence known. And we head westward out into the Pacific. There's a 1029 millibar high. Another frontal system well to the south of the Aleutians and a very deep frontal system in the central Aleutians, which will be drifting north towards Anadir. In Alaska, temperatures remain in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Not much going on. However, we do have a, a winter weather advisory into this evening. Just north and east of Fairbanks, three to six inches of wet snow possible. 
and winds gusting to 35 miles an hour. In Canada, let's take a look up north. Yeah, some of that bitter cold starting to show up at Eureka, 5 degrees, 23 at Resolute with some snow coming down, 21 at Thule. So that's a sign of winter starting to take hold and soon we'll see those below zero temperatures. A fresh outbreak of cold air sweeping through the western part of Canada, clearing Great Slave Lake and Fort McMurray and approaching Calgary. Further east in Canada, high pressure across Ontario, cool temperatures in the 40s and 50s, and some slightly cooler air moving through northern Quebec. Don't have any watches or warnings, but there are some showers all across the St. Lawrence Valley. In the tropics, we go all the way back to Tuesday night. Here's the Outer Banks of the Carolinas. And more importantly, here is Bermuda. Very hard to see, but that speck right there, that blue speck, that's going to be it. And here is Imelda. Bermuda took a direct hit from Imelda on Wednesday, about 10 p.m., tracked pretty close to the NHC and revised GFS guidance. So there it is, about to get swallowed up there. At the time, the sustained winds were 100 miles an hour, making it a low-end Category 2 storm. Imelda did knock out power and down some trees. No significant damage or casualties were reported. The current outlook, well, we resume the old doldrums pattern. Stagnant throughout the tropics, the Cape Verde storm track looking to maybe become active later next week. Let's take a look at the GFS guidance. Well, for this evening, things are dominated by that modifying polar high up to the north. Very little in the way of pressure gradients through the trade wind belt. And going through the weekend and into next week, here comes a wave. This is probably what NHC is watching. So this is going to approach the Leeward Islands for Thursday and Friday. It may undergo some development, also some possibility of development near the Bahamas. However, you can see some strong indications of recurvature on both of these. So I'm not really too sure if those are going to have much effect on the East Coast. So looking at those uh, three frames right there, this appears to suggest something like that. So ultimately, it will depend on the upper level wind profile in this part of the eastern U.S., the far western Atlantic. So we'll just have to revisit this next week. So we are grasping at straws, looking for anything interesting to talk about. We'll just uh, let the temperature maps speak for themselves. 90s through the central U.S., much cooler through the uh, northern Rockies. Temperatures only in the 50s during the afternoon. Of course, we have that winter weather advisory and winter storm warning in the higher elevations. Much cooler for Sunday. Things drop off into the 40s. 44 there at Butte, 48 at Bozeman, and 39 at Yellowstone. So not the best time of the year to be camping in that part of the country. Some of the cold air does make its way east. Very little down to the south. And in fact, summer remains well entrenched through much of the week in Texas. Overnight lows looking like this for Saturday morning and then for Sunday morning. Widespread 30s all up and down the Rockies as far south as Gallup, 31 with a freeze for Sunday morning. And a little bit cooler there for Monday. Starting to see some teens at Yellowstone Park. 20s and 30s elsewhere, and gradually we get some air mass modification going into midweek. Some cooler air up there in Minnesota, and some of that does make its way into the northeastern U.S. for Thursday, 30s, appearing across much of the Great Lakes. Here's the precipitation for tonight. Widespread throughout the eastern part of Idaho, Salt Lake City, Wendover, and Elko, shifting eastward very slowly into Wyoming, southern Montana, and the central Rockies for Saturday. And then for Saturday night, starting to move up into the northern plains. Another round coming through the northern Rockies for Sunday, and then we start to get some drying. Best rain chances for early next week looks to be in Iowa, Nebraska, and the Great Lakes. The rest of the country fairly dry. And we'll put the maps into motion. There's the current outlay of the frontal positions. The front will be moving through the central Rockies on Saturday and into the Great Plains on Sunday. 
most of the precipitation tracking up into the Dakotas, Montana, and parts of Wyoming. Lots of trailing precipitation in that cold advection regime. For next week, again, most of the effects will be in the northern plains. One little Alberta clipper tries to come south. Here comes another Pacific weather system trying to come together. That moves into the Montana, Wyoming area around Sunday or Monday the following week. And again, most of the influence is going to be on the Great Lakes. Looks like maybe a southern stream system in Oklahoma. But, you know, this is October 12th. So, again, we're going to have to revisit this next week. Anyway, that's the weather picture. And that will do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Remember to keep supporting this program through Patreon or heading on to weathergraphics.com and picking up a book. All of that will be greatly appreciated, and it does help keep this program going. All right, we'll see you back here again on Monday for the supporters and on Tuesday for everybody else. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.